Hey you guys, welcome back to the channel Physics Surgery and here we are in Pathfinder Solution Series and I have brought forward to you two problems uh, in the chapter of electromagnetism uh, where we'll be using a concept of rolling disc analogy to solve situations where a point charge is thrown perpendicular to a crossed electric and magnetic field. A crossed electric magnetic field means magnetic field and electric field are perpendicular to each other and velocity of the particle uh, which is charged is thrown perpendicular to the magnetic field. These problems can be actually solved using alternative methods of writing general equations of Lorentz force and also using field transformation technique for which I have already done some videos in the past in this channel. but. Uh, some of the subscribers have been requesting for the rolling disk analogy because this is more uh, pertaining towards the JE advanced preparation. So these are the two problems I have selected. And at the end of the video, I'll also give you a practice problem on a similar crossed electric and magnetic field situation. Okay, so let's move forward. I would request you to concentrate very carefully while going through the solution of these two problems. Okay, so this is the first one I'll be presenting. Build your understanding, question number 20. And the second one is the uh, check your understanding, question number six. Uh, this I've already solved in the past, the same question using field transformation technique. Okay, so those who are uncomfortable with the field transformation technique because it's not taught in JE Advanced, they are requested to actually watch through this solution very, very carefully. Okay, right. So let's start with the easier one. Okay, so in case you have not tried this problem, I would request you to the pa pause the video here and try it for four to five minutes and do come back for the complete concept uh, explanation and the solution of this problem. Okay, so let's go ahead with the formal wording of the question. A rigid ring is made to roll along the ceiling of a room where a horizontal uniform and static magnetic field of induction B exists perpendicular to the plane of the ring. Velocity of the center of the ring is constant and its modulus is V. A charge particle P of mass small m here is fixed on the ring. What should be the charge Q on the particle and the radius small r of the ring so that there is no force of interaction between the ring and the attached particle? Okay, so he's requesting you to calculate the charge on the particle appropriately the size of the ring in terms of its radius so that there is no force of interaction even though they are attached the motion should be such that that there should not be any force of interaction between the two okay right the force that he's talking about is the mechanical contact force okay so i hope you have given it enough try and let's move forward with the concept first that is involved in that rolling disc analogy so uh, if you want to have this uh, discussion in an elaborate manner, there was an already a past question that was solved using both rolling disk analogy and also the field transformation technique. Uh, this is a very old video, I think more than eight months before uh, in this channel, right? So uh, watch this video. The link of this is in the description below or the I button above and do come back uh, in case you have already watched it. So let's try to revise that concept, what was discussed in the rolling disk analogy. So summary of the concept, in case you have watched that video, is the idea that if a charge particle is released from rest in the presence of a crossed electric and magnetic field, crossed fields means these two are perpendicular to each other, then it, it executes a cycloid motion analogical to a point on the rim of a rolling disc. Okay, so imagine this, there is a rolling disc which is rolled on a ceiling, the point which is in contact with the uh, ceiling is the point at rest okay at that instant as the time progresses this point actually executes a motion which is cycloidal in nature okay so this cycloidal motion if it has to be mechanically analyzed then you should imagine that there is a point on the disc and that motion is being superposed with the motion of a particle in the presence of a magnetic field and electric field okay so then the properties of that particular imaginary disk that you are thinking should be related to the properties of this electric and magnetic field. In that video, we derived that the omega of that so-called disk should be QB by M and the velocity of the center of mass of the disk, which is going along a straight line like this, should be E by B in magnitude. And the radius of the disk, the size here is related to VCM by omega because VCM and R omega should balance each other so that there is rolling. And the ratio of these two quantities, if you do the right hand side and you get ME by QB square. Okay, so 
if at all you are given a problem of a E and a B perpendicular to each other and a charged particle released from rest, you can transform that problem into a rolling disk problem where the rolling disk has these three properties. Three important properties of rolling disk are its radius, the velocity of center of mass and the angular velocity, which are written in terms of these E's and B's. Okay, right. So with this idea, if I try to use that in the present problem, so the our challenge is on the left side. So just follow my lead. Don't try to read it on your own. If once I explain, you'll be able to understand the things very, very clearly. Okay, so this is our problem in which you might complain saying there is no electric field in the question. I would say that the gravitational field in the downward direction can be assumed to be a kind of an electric field by transforming it this manner. So mg on the particle can be considered due to an imaginary electric field in the downward direction of mg by q. So I've transformed this to a problem of B and E perpendicular to each other. Now think if this was a charged particle which was left on its own in this E and B, it would have executed an analogy motion like this due to an imaginary disk. Okay, but you do have a ring here or you can consider this as also a disk okay, of certain radius. Then if the disk of this uh, real problem and the disk of this analogy situation have the same size and properties, then there no, need not be an extra force that is required between the disk and this particle. The electric and magnetic field properties are sufficient enough to have taken it along this path. Okay, imagine the disk that I have here is not of the same size as the disk that really exists, then particle wants to execute a different cycloidal motion and the real ring or real disk here wants to take it along a different cycloidal motion. Therefore, because there is mismatch, then there should exist a contact force to force the particle to go along a cycloidal motion governed by this ring. So if that contact force has to be absent, then you have to believe that this ring in reality should match with the analogical disk or ring that I spoke of in the previous concept. That's what is written here. The charge particle P would have executed cycloidal motion of its own guided by an imaginary disk of radius capital R given by this quantity that I wrote in the previous slide. The role of the ring in our challenge right, will be immaterial if its radius R and its V and its omega match with that of the imaginary disk properties we wrote in the previous slide. Then it will not exert any contact force. If the particle is executing already what it is supposed to, then there is no need of an extra force, mechanical force of contact to execute that motion. So this capital R of imaginary disk and this small r of this actual ring they should match with each other. Only difference, only thing that you have to take care in this problem is the capital E has to be replaced by the equivalent gravitational field. You can't directly write G, so you have to write Mg by Q. So if I do that and also match the velocity of that particle, which is E by B, remember E by B, E is also replaced with the gravitational field equivalent, right? These are the two quantities that are equations that you have to write. So remember, he has asked us to calculate Q value. Okay, so first calculate Q from here. Okay, so there's no R in this. So Q, if you rearrange, will give you mg by bv. And substitute that Q back into this equation to get the value of R as v square by g. So these are the two requirements without writing any Lorentz force equations and without writing any field transformations by just visualizing the real ring as the analogical disk or the imaginary disk and matching the sizes of these two imaginary and real disk, we are able to arrive at this answer in one step. Okay, so I hope you appreciated this. Let's move on to the second problem and try to apply this concept of analogical disk to further strengthen the understanding. Okay, so you want to give it a try, pause the video here, try it out for five to 10 minutes and do come back for the explanation. Okay, so I'll go ahead with the formal reading. A charged particle starts sliding down a frictionless slope of inclination theta in the presence of a uniform horizontal and static magnetic field of induction B directed perpendicular into the plane of the figure and uniform gravitational field of earth. So it means there is a B invert to this diagram and a G which is vertically downward. Intensity of gravitational field is G. After sliding an unknown distance L along the inclined plane, the particle leaves the slope and follows a cycloidal trajectory as shown in the figure. 
that was predicted okay once it leaves the inclined plane on which it was moving along a straight line it would have guaranteed a mo uh, velocity with which it will leave and then once it is in space i have already told you that it will be of a cycloidal trajectory if on the trajectory maximum vertical displacement of the particle is h that means if this going in a cycloid like this distance between the upward most point and the downward most point of this is h find the value of this l that it has slid on the slope in terms of this h and theta and rest of the quantities that are mentioned in the question okay so i hope you have given it uh, a fair try let's move forward again try to encapsulate all the concepts and then apply it in this particular problem okay so right stage 1 till it loses the contact on that particular incline once it starts from rest as it moves along okay by the time it loses contact here normal reaction in this direction should be zero right therefore your mg cos theta which is this way should balance with magnetic force on the particle which will be q u b in this direction that's what is going to happen so the speed that it would acquire by the time it reaches here would be given by this number okay simultaneously if i use work energy theorem knowing the fact that magnetic force doesn't do work from here to here it's the only gravity that does work mgl sin theta that is the fall in potential energy should be equal to the gain in kinetic energy which is half mu square so whether you want to write u in terms of b or whether you want to write u purely in terms of g you can use any of these two equations both should satisfy each other depending on our next step of calculations we'll try to see which of these expressions will be useful simultaneously you should realize that since the forces in this direction are balanced right the only acceleration this particle will have as it leaves the plane would be along the velocity so i realize from this also that that acceleration is going to be g sin theta at that instant in the direction of motion which is parallel to u bar this is a very important part in order to apply in the rolling disk analogy in the next stage okay so keep this in mind and keep these two equations if required okay so i hope you got up till the stage 1 let's move to the second part and compare it with the concepts that we have in rolling motion let's revise the rolling motion ideas both in terms of velocity and acceleration once before we apply it to the problem okay so the left hand side we were taught i have taken a disk which is moving on a ceiling even though i'll be using the disk moving on a ceiling later right so here it is moving on floor sorry and i'll apply it for the disk moving on a ceiling okay so it doesn't matter uh, whether it's uh, rolling i need to just check where the icr is and the icr which is the instantaneous center of rotation decides the direction of velocity of different points this is a common concept that you should be knowing for example for a point q which is at a distance y from icr this is let's say is y distance the velocity of this point can be considered to be perpendicular to the line joining the icr and q and the magnitude of that is y times omega where omega is the angular velocity of this disk okay so different different points you will have different velocities icr is a point you should realize is with a velocity instantaneously zero but acceleration is not zero so it's a non inertial point but at rest so you can measure velocity of any point on the disk correctly because its own velocity is zero okay right but you can't measure the acceleration of a point on the disk with respect to icr because icr is a non inertial frame non inertial because it has an acceleration whereas if you want to measure the acceleration the better point is the center of mass cm is a point which has reverse properties of icr okay here velocity is not zero because it moves along a straight line like this but acceleration of cm is going to be zero when the velocity is constant okay on a rolling uh, situation therefore with respect to cm any point on the disk will actually move in a uniform circular motion and in a uniform circular motion any point will have the acceleration which is centripetal and directed towards the center if the radius of this particular point with respect to cm is x distance this is your x then the acceleration directed towards center would be x omega square the y here is measured for velocities in from icr distance and x here for acceleration purpose is measured from center of mass so if someone asks you is center of mass an inertial point yes because acceleration is zero so accelerations are correctly calculated from cm frame velocities are correctly calculated from 
the icr frame okay so i hope these two points are clear now when it comes to the last step of the step one we wanted the point to have a velocity let's move we wanted a point on the disk to have a velocity which is parallel to acceleration keep this in mind that means you have to merge these two properties in which i can find a point on the disk where the velocity and acceleration should be parallel to each other so that i can match it with the cycloidal motion okay so with that in mind let's move and apply it to this so lot of things on the board so just follow my lead if the particle on the leftmost side in the actual diagram is moving along the incline sliding increasing its speed and we found the speed here as it leaves the motion once it has left it should be part of a cycloidal motion so this point i'll try to find on that imaginary disk such that the point's velocity is along the incline like this and also acceleration is also in the same direction so how many points do you have on the disk which is rolling on the ceiling now i have taken the ceiling on the top icr is on the top okay for the convenience because the velocity is this way i can't find it with the rolling on the floor okay so that gave me idea that i have to take the rolling from the ceiling okay so with this as the icr i can draw different different yellow lines from there and direct the velocity perpendicular to the line joining but at the same time that particular point imagine this is the line and this is the point which depicts this particular point its velocity will be perpendicular to this yellow line like this but if that direction itself should be the direction of acceleration it should pass through the center so this line and this line should be perpendicular to each other for the property of this point okay so one more important thing if the distance of this point from the center is let's say some x then with respect to center this will have a radius of circular motion of x in the actual cycloidal motion this will go down and up like this but its highest point and lowest point would be separated by the diameter of this particular circle which in turn was given as h in the problem so if this top point and this bottom point match the dimensions of this particular imagination then if this is h then this radius has to be h by 2 okay so i hope you appreciate all the information that i gave you at this place this disk is rolling on the ceiling with the center of mass velocity towards right and omega in the anti clockwise sense so that this point is at rest okay right one more important thing since the acceleration of this point is directed this way that should be parallel to the direction in here it it is it may not be showing up exactly parallel because the diagram in the textbook has not drawn exactly to scale so this parallel incline and this white line should be parallel to each other okay so which means this horizontal line if i draw and extend in this direction this should be theta and this theta can be borrowed to this diagram at this place as theta because this is a right angled triangle okay so if the radius of the original disk is capital r this angle is theta okay so this is your h by 2 this yellow line will be uh, because radius is not given i'll express this entire triangle in terms of h by 2 and theta so this yellow line would be simply h by 2 cot theta okay so keep this in mind now what is the acceleration of the particle acceleration of the particle here would be towards the center given by h by 2 omega square remember radius into omega square but that has been calculated in the previous slide as g sin theta here so these two quantities should be equal to each other that gives me an opportunity to write value of omega square in terms of h by 2 and g sin theta in this manner keep this one at hand second thing the value of speed at this place for this point which is the same as the u that i calculated here should be equal to this yellow line distance from icr multiplied by omega this yellow line distance in terms of this h by 2 and theta i convinced you that it is h by 2 cot theta multiplied by omega then i remember that i have already solved for u square using work energy theorem in the previous slide here right remember this one u square is known to us okay so keeping that idea in mind i square this relation and write this one okay right so that i get that omega square and i substitute that one here so the value of u square from the energy relation i substitute as 2 gl sin theta and the value of omega square from the previous calculation here i'll substitute here so everything substituted with all the l and h relation that i required 
So the sine theta obviously will get cancelled on both sides and you end up getting the required value of this L in terms of this H and theta given as H by 4 cot square theta, which was the answer given in the book. Surprisingly, the answer was independent of the B or the G that he mentioned. So once you know this H in the experiment, you can actually calculate this value of L. This might look a, quite a slightly longer method because I tried to explain it step by step, but students who understand and practice this rolling analogy problem would write it in two or three steps. That's what I did when I was making this video. Okay, so in case you are interested in an alternative method of the same problem, I've produced a video in the past using the field transformation. The field transformation uh, or the uh, transformation of electric field into magnetic field and vice versa by moving frame is a concept not very familiar for JE aspirants, but it is a very easy concept to understand and you can watch this video to add to your shortcuts for Olympiad and JE advanced examinations. Okay, so the link of this video I have produced in the description below and let's see the practice problem. Just before the practice problem, a quick reminder about the website of physicsurgy.in and I have already made a video on this website and how the website could be used by the serious JE aspirants uh, in order to gain an advantage over uh, in their preparation. Okay, so link of this video is in the description below. During this weekend, I'll be adding some more problem sets which I've already done, right? And uh, by this weekend, there will be more problem sets added to this particular uh, website. Okay, so here's the practice problem. Uh, I'll be taking up this problem in the AITS Select Series. The problem has been selected in such a way that you have crossed electric and magnetic fields, but you need to decide which of the methods is the best method to solve it in the exam condition. Okay, so I'll be really curious how you go ahead with this problem. So there are three methods. One is the direct Lorentz force basic equation writing. Second one is the rolling analogy disk uh, method. And the third one is if you're good enough, you can go ahead with the field transformation technique. All the methods will not work in exam condition. So you should be smart enough to choose your method properly. Okay, so therefore, please comment your answer below along with the method that you follow to reach your answer with the timestamp of the video so that I can comment whether your method and approach are correct. And in case you people struggle to get to the answer, I'll definitely produce the video solution of this in the coming uh, series. Okay, so. Um, that's it. If you uh, have to check out the rest of the series, please do find the links of all the playlists in the description below. In case you're new, just go through the playlist and go through the description below. You will be guided through some wonderful videos in this particular channel. And uh, in case you have liked the presentation of the subject in this channel or this video, please do leave a like. Liked videos get recommended to more people by YouTube algorithm. That's how it works. So that's the reason why I request you to like it. And please do share the content and subscribe to the channel. And just watch four or five videos per day of this particular channel before your preparation uh, to the JE advanced examination. I'm sure you'll have an edge over others. Thanks for staying this long and see you in the next video.